Great to see so many of you who are still with us and have stayed for our final event. Um, and it's my pleasure now to introduce um, our closing plenary of today. Uh, Jonathan Meller, who some of you have met, some of you have seen at lunch, over at the coffee break, and some of you um, will have been in one of his sessions. Jonathan is going to be uh, doing for us this, this presentation, Active English, Getting the Word Off the Page and Into Students' Mouths, Minds and Hearts. Jonathan is um, a mixture of a variety of different skills and experience. He's a teacher, he's a trainer, uh, he's a singer, he's an accomplished singer, and it was recently, some of you may have seen him, last week he was singing with his group in the Barcock in, uh, in Madrid, and he's also an actor, um, an actor who's worked in the past with a variety of people, from Tom Cruise, it says here, Cameron Diaz, Elsa Pateki. I asked him for some... Uh, gossip about any of the, uh, these people, and uh, he did tell me a couple of things, but if I tell you, I'm afraid that'll not be for public use, so I won't mention any of those. He is also about to um, be seen on television in um, a new series called Refugiados, um, which I think is going to be on Antena Tres or La Sexta, so you'll be seeing him there as well. He's, his background is he's an Oxford graduate, so if you were here with us this morning, you can listen out for his RP. Oxford English, as Robin would have said. Um, he's trained as a CELT, he's, he's done his CELTA course, so he's trained as a teacher, trained as a trainer. He's done quite a bit of publishing as well, um, and he's also worked quite frequently with the British Council, most recently in our Word Book Day. So a lot of experience, um, a lot of uh, variety of background, and an extremely entertaining and interesting trainer and actor. So I leave you with Jonathan Meller. Thank you. Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. I come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. The evil that men do lives after them. The good is often interred with their bones, so let it be with Caesar. The noble Brutus hath told you Caesar was ambitious. It was so. It was a grievous fault. And grievously hath Caesar answered it. Here, under the leave of Brutus and the rest, for Brutus is an honorable man, I, all, all honorable men, come I to speak in Caesar's funeral. He was my friend, faithful and just to me. But Brutus says he was ambitious, and Brutus is an honorable man. Many times hath he brought captives home to Rome, whose ransoms have the general coffers filled did this in Caesar seem ambitious? When that the poor have cried, Caesar hath wept. Ambition should be made of sterner stuff. But Brutus says he was ambitious, and Brutus is an honorable man. You all did see that on the Lupercal, I thrice offered him the kingly crown which thrice he did refuse. Was this ambition? But Brutus says he was 
ambitious and sure. He is an honorable man. Now, I speak not, not to disprove what Brutus spoke, but here am I to speak what I do know. You all did love him once, and not without cause. What cause then withholds you to mourn for him? Oh, reason is lost to men and gone to brutish beasts. Bear with me. My heart is in the coffin there with Caesar and I must pause till it come back to me. But yesterday, the word of Caesar might have stood against the world. Now he lies here with none so poor to do him reverence, O masters. If I were disposed to stir your hearts and minds to mutiny and rage, I should wrong Brutus and wrong Cassius. And they are honorable men. I will not wrong them. I, I will rather wrong the dead wrong myself and you than I should wrong such honourable men. Yet, here's a parchment with Caesar's seal. I found it in his closet. It is his will. Stay a while, be patient, my good friends. I must not read it to you. It is not meet. You know how Caesar loved you. You are not stones. You are not wood, but men. And being men, hearing the will of Caesar, it will inflame you. It will make you mad. It is good you know not how Caesar loved you. For if you should, oh, what would come of it? Stay a while. Be patient. I have o'ershot myself to tell you of it. I fear I wrong the honorable men who have stabbed Caesar. I do fear it. Now, at that point <laughs> in the proceedings, well, uh, anybody know what happens next? What happened next? Any suggestions? Mark Anthony does a song. They go for a pint. Anybody? He convinces the people over Brutus. Thanks to my chorus of Brutus fans over there. Good job, guys. Very good. Setting the scene. Absolutely. He continues and he convinces um, the people, the mob, the crowd, the plebeo, the plebeians, you lot. Smelly, the unwashed masses. And the nobles up there, Brut Brutus is up there. Um, now that is exactly what I did, well, exactly, no, but more or less what I did um, back in April uh, when, for the, for, the, for the students, for the young students in the Madrid Young Learner Center, exactly like that, burst in to a class. They, weren't exactly expecting it. I think the teacher was primed, um, burst in and did that speech and then carried on doing a little bit, of, uh, little bit of work with the students. 15 minutes and then rushed off to another class where I did another bit of different Shakespeare. And this was, um, this was the idea of, crazy idea of John. 
who is John Liddy, who's here, who, uh, who invited me to do that, and that's why I'm here, because they thought it might be interesting. So what I'm going to do um, today is kind of performance. I'm going to do a bit of performance, and you are my students. So you're going to, that's why the lights are on, so we can see each other's faces, so you don't feel kind of... Um, you know, hiding away there in the darkness in, in the background. So, uh, if, uh, if you enjoy uh, the plenary session, thank you very much. And if you don't, it's John, John Liddy's fault. John, would you? <laughs> what? You have brains in your head. You have to see your shoes. You can see yourself in any direction you choose. <laughs> I'm the best Norwich pays the best. Anybody else? No. Okay. You have to go wholeheartedly into anything in order to achieve anything worth having. Right, good. Um, that's not Shakespeare. Um, that's flash reading, no, John? The idea of, of getting people in. Um, it's all about getting our students to look at uh, language learning, any kind of learning in a different way. In the session this morning, uh, we talked about not just teaching language, but teaching, being educators, and getting our students up and active. And that's why you guys are going to be doing it, so I'm going to put you in the student's position. But I'm glad John uh, and his crew interrupted me there because that's, well, not interrupted, took, took advantage of a break because um, I now need to do the same. So if you forgive me, I'm just going to sort of hand, hand these out, uh, you know, rand randomly sort of. Uh, so it, it doesn't have to be people together, just, sorry, cameras. Sorry, cameras. Sorry, microphones. Spread you out, Aidan, have you got... No, it's, it's not what's up on the screen. We'll do that in a minute. Go over this side. Okay, there's people at the back want their audiences. So, piece of paper, just take them. Not one for everybody because not all the crowd, not all the plebeians necessarily agreed with Mark Antony. So, you are obviously the plebeians and I am still Mark Antony. Um... The students did this without me having to explain anything to them. They knew exactly what they needed to do. Do you need some help or will I just... Okay. What's the situation? Mark Antony, the death of uh, Julius Caesar. Antony trying to turn, as our friend has said, uh, the crowd against Brutus and his actions. Um, your cue is, those of you that have pieces of paper and I really want you to go for this and help me get everybody else involved please your cue is I fear I have wronged the honorable men who have stabbed Caesar I fear it and you're in okay yeah I'm, I'm not feeling that you're convinced <laughs> now obviously we haven't you know, nominated anybody, just go for it. If you feel like standing up and shouting, I would approve of that behavior. <laughs> What's your cue? I fear it. Be patient, good friends, stay a while. I have all shot myself to speak of it. I have wronged the honorable men who have stabbed Caesar. I do fear it. Okay, that's not going to convince me. <laughs> Should we do it again, one more time. This, this is going live around the world, guys. I mean, this is your... There will be agents calling from everywhere, just... I fear I have wronged the honorable men whose daggers have stabbed Caesar. I do fear it. Don't read it. Read the word. Read the word. 
There's a Roman with a slightly Irish accent over the head, don't know. <laughs> How are you? Right, let's carry on. Read the will. Who's next? Anybody? Just. Somebody else. Anybody? I, I, think we, I think we need to do this <laughs> slightly differently. So, no, no, this is good because this is, this is you know, I'm kind of, right. So when you, when you feel that you want to say something, stand up and run to the front and shout at me. Okay? Now, we're all friends together. We all, you know, so no, no need to be shy. Okay, this is it. Last time. But this could go fast and hard and bam, 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 bam. Okay? I fear I have wronged the honourable men who are running around Caesar. I do fear it. Okay, now nobody wants to come forward. <laughs> right, I'll carry on. If you have tears, prepare to shed them now. You all do know this mantle. I... Remember the first time ever Caesar put it on. It was on a summer's night in his tent, the day he overcame the Nervii. Through this, the most beloved Brutus stabbed. And as he plucked his cursed steel away, mark how the blood of Caesar followed it as rushing out of doors to be resolved if Brutus so came knocking or no. For Brutus, as you all know, was Caesar's angel. Oh, judge ye gods, how Caesar loved him. This was the most unkindest cut of all. And in his mantle, great Caesar fell. Oh, my countrymen, what a, what a fall was there. Then did I and you and all of us fall down whilst bloody treason flourished over us. Oh, now I see you do weep and do perceive you feel the dint of pity. There's a cue coming up, you're coming in next. <laughs> I perceive you feel the dint of pity. These are gracious drops. Oh, Thank you. <laughs> it's just getting over the fears. Of the Thank you, sorry, it was wonderful, do it again, sorry. Oh, oh, no, oh now we're getting into it. Oh, right, now we're getting somewhere. Good. There's, there's, a, lot, there's a lot more. Eh? <laughs> stand, up, stand up when you're saying it because we can't, we need to hear you, please. Almost died Ooh. Now, now we're getting convincing, right. Here is the will, and under Caesar's seal. To every Roman citizen, to every several man, he leaves 75 drachmas. Moreover, he hath left you all his walks, his private arbors and new planted orchards on this side, Tiber. He has left them you and to your heirs forever common pleasures to walk abroad and recreate yourselves. Here was a Caesar. When comes such another? When? Sorry? When? Never. 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 Come away, away. 
Oh, this, this, this I love. You have to see this. <laughs> that is participation. <laughs> Thank you very much. And at the end of the scene, uh, the people come down and they take up the body and they run off. And Mark Antony's plan, his plot to, to revenge the death of Caesar and, and, uh, and take over comes to, comes to fruition. So that is a little bit of, uh, of Julius Caesar. And pretty much that's how I did it with the students. And pretty much the students did it the same way. They were a bit quiet and then there was one who just went for it. <laughs> and all the others, others went for it. Now, there was, a, there was a comment when I did it back in... In April, ooh, I'm not sure, I'm not sure they understood every word. Good comment, and I'm grateful to that, to that, to that teacher that, that made that comment. But it's not about understanding every word. That's my job as the actor, to understand what I want to understand and try to transmit something. And we talked in the session earlier, I'm sorry if I'm repeating stuff that you heard earlier, but it, it, it's about getting emotional engagement, theatre, uh, it's more about emotional engagement than anything, or it should be, I think. And uh, it's now pretty common knowledge that, that the best kind of learning is emotional learning, or stuff that we learn emotionally is the stuff, is the stuff that sticks with us. And getting up and doing things, you're going to remember that. You're going to remember it, whether you're doing it or whether you're seeing it for somebody else. So, and quite, quite literally, I mean, that's, that's what I did. I burst in. John had the idea that 15 minutes, Flash Shakespeare, a bit like the Flash reading, um, a quick burst. We chatted a little bit about the language. The students got it. Uh, they got what they needed to get. Not because I'm the best actor in the world. Thank you, agents around the world. But uh, because, because I knew what I wanted to transmit to them, and that's, and that's, what, uh, that's what they did. So, so we did that. So we'll do a little bit more of that later. Uh, the, the will of Caesar will stay with me, because you don't deserve it, actually. You wouldn't. Um, Right, good. Um, tribes, clans, families fighting against each other. Um, warring warriors, soldiers, swords, and all of that kind of stuff. Blood, kings, thrones. It's on TV, no? Everybody's, everybody's seen it, no? What's it, what's, what, what's it called? It's called Macbeth. Because Shakespeare did it before Game of Thrones years ago. And better. So, right. Uh, you guys won. You guys two. You guys three. Sorry. You guys first. You guys second. And you guys third. Okay? The divisions here, um, don't worry about them. We're going to go straight on. Yeah, I've, I've, I've put it together. I had this absolutely brilliant whole musical backgroundy thing taken from a television program that shall remain unnamed. Um, but we decided not to use that for various reasons. So, it is a time of war. It's a time of fear, it's a time of blood, and Scotland. <laughs> Any Scots in tonight? Mm -hmm. And Scotland bleeds, torn apart by the battles raging between her warring clans and under siege from marauding enemies from beyond her borders, the imperious Saxons to the south and the rampaging Norsemen from across the Scandinavian seas. One ring, no, one goal, one purpose, one aim unites them all to seize the throne of Scotland and with it the entire nation. One of the greatest warriors of the time, a cousin of the kings, the Scots nobleman, a thane called. Superstition, right. A thane called Macbeth fights unceasingly and fierce, fearlessly to defend his kinsman's lands and his life. In one of the bloodiest battles of the entire 
warring period. Macbeth, with his army, defeats the Norwegians at a place called Forres. Now, returning home after the battle, he and his friend and fellow warrior Banquo, crossing a vast and desolate plain, when they are stopped in their tracks by the most ghastly sight, the most terrible, unearthly creatures. Okay, that's ghastly and terrible, but for the wrong reasons. You know what? We need some help. We need some help. We need, we need music. We, we, need, we, need that, we need that music. So, um, let's, get, let's, get warm, let's get warmed up. We need a little a bit of a sort of military sort of rhythms. So, put, put things down. That's why it's on the screen. So, you don't need, you don't need your iPads and chismes and all of that. Okay? Um, let's just see what it sounds like if everybody... Mike, guys, be careful, please. If, if, if everybody at the same time goes... Doesn't sound very threatening. Let's do it with our feet as well. Yeah? But in time. No, no, that's not working. You sound, you sound like a bunch of horses that have had way too much Scots whiskey. Um, let's do it with the hands. Let's do it with the hands. And. Returning home, returning home after battle in forest, Macbeth and his friend and fellow warrior Banquo stop in their tracks as they come across the most unearthly sight, the sight of three ghastly, terrible creatures. Okay, hang on a second. We, can, we can't read it from there. With me. Uh, where, where are we? That will be ere the set of sun. That will be ere the set of sun. You can't read it, can you? It's very difficult. Foul and foul is fair, hover through the fog and filthy air. Fair is foul and foul is fair, hover through the fog and filthy air. Wouldn't terrify me, but... <laughs> but doesn't it feel kind of good with everybody making all that noise? No? Well, I, I love I mean, I love it. That, I mean, I, that. I, I used to get into, into trouble at, at, at the Young Learner Centre and Martina Campos because my classes were so noisy. <laughs> But now they know me, they, they, they let me get away with it. Right, let's try and keep that rhythm. The, the. All right, well, you do it then, it's fun. A bit slower, a bit slower, a bit slower, because otherwise we're not going to be able to say it. Because the nice thing about uh, Shakespeare, what Shakespeare does, and this is a good bit of noticing if you want to do in the classroom, is let's notice what the rhythm is on this, because later we're going to look at some other characters speaking in a different way. The Weird Sisters... Peace, the charms wound up, and, and uh, Macbeth and Banquo appear. Right, this is even more. And this is this is how I this is how I do it with the with the, the students, guys. So th this works. Works better with them, in fact. But. Right, I know it's difficult for everybody to see, um, but let's see if we can. Uh, read alternate lines or alternate phrase. I'm not giving you instructions. One of the lovely things about drama is that it's so empowering and so autonomous. What? I can do Shakespeare, but I can't speak proper English. Right? Uh, autonomous. Empowering. Letting them, letting them do what they want to do. Okay? Which is, you know, usually joining in. So, don't have to say everything, but see if we can, let's see if we can get pretty, I, I, I want to be frightened. I want to frighten the people who are watching us in 
wherever they're watching us. Let's, let's. So it's the same rhythm. Double, double, toil and trouble, fire, burn and cauldron, bubble. I know it's difficult to read. You're not frightening me. I'm not getting very frightened. Nose of Turk and Tartar's lips. Ditch delivered by a drab. Make the gruel thick and slab. Add thereto a tiger's children for the ingredients of our cauldron. By the pricking, something. Open locks, whoever knocks. That could be more frightening, but. At which point, <clears throat> Macbeth says, one of my favorite lines in all literature, how now, you midnight black, and how, how now, what is it? It's gone completely. How now, you, not brown cow. <laughs> how now, you, how now, how now, she was in my session before, she's primed for that. How now, you secret black and midnight hags, what is it you do? And the witches say, a deed without a name. <laughs> Which is fun. So, uh, students absolutely love doing all that, making all that noise. And then they can go home and say, we did Shakespeare in class today. We did it, you're doing it, we're doing Shakespeare. You know, we're not gonna be on the Royal Shakespeare Theatre stage this afternoon, but we're, we're doing things. Right, good. Um, thank you. Uh, Caesar's mantle can go. Um, I'm carrying on, I'm talking to you as if you are the students that come into the classroom. Okay guys, what's this? Water, C. Okay, good. So if this is C, what's this? Beach, land, okay. Good. Can you think of any plays by Shakespeare that have got the sea and the land and The Tempest? And I didn't set that up. That is actually perfectly, exactly The Tempest, which is on the next page, I think. <laughs> How are we doing for turn? Uh, or, oh, no. Um, Guillermo? Can we go to the next page, please? Vamos a la siguiente, tío, por favor. There we go, super. Right. Um, ladies, which is most of the audience, <laughs> you're the captain. <laughs> Gents, we're the sailors. All right? Um, but I really do need some physical volunteers now. I need... Ten people to come on stage with me, please. Please. Take hold of this, please. Inside. Come inside. I'll organize you. Come inside. Uh, who, who, who most looks like um, uh, uh, a figurehead? Uh, what are they called? Figureheads, no? On the prow of a boat? Yeah, the uh, mascaron. I can't think of the word in English. <laughs> Yeah, the wooden woman, right, you, you, you're the wooden woman, right, come with me. Okay, thank you very much, okay. I want you to, I want you to come here, please. Seriously. Here, yeah. because you look like a sort of mermaid. Do I need to? Right, and the rest of, no, you don't have to put a scary face, and the rest of you come back at an angle, please. Take hold of the, take hold of the, see, please. Titanic. Okay, Titanic moment, there we go. And with that, more of the kids, more of our students are suddenly, oh, Titanic, oh, blah, and they're in, because it's something they know, like it's Game of Thrones, or it's Spartacus, or whatever it is, to connect with them. Right, uh, the Tempest. In a Tempest, we have um, rain. Uh, what else? Thunder, what else? Lightning, what else? Right. Um, rain. Thunder and lightning. The sea making lots of noise, right? But you've got to do it with your hands and, and all that kind of stuff uh, because at the same time, we're going to do this. 
Ladies, you're the captain. Gents, we're the sailors. Okay? So let's start the tempest with a bit of thunder. It's not going to sink this boat. Okay, thunder, lightning, rain. Keep it going. Sea. Lovely bits of paper. And keep it going, keep it going. This is all the way through, all the way through. Captain. I don't even have to be here. It's fantastic. Need to hear it, guys. This is theatre. Hang on a second. Zuntio, este, no. All right, fantastic. Um, let's let's cut to right down at the end. You can't all see it. The bottom there. Sailors all lost. All lost. You're about to die in the sea, far from home. Thunder, rain, sea. All lost. All lost. We split, we split, we split, we split, we split, we split, we split. <laughs> and that's it, they've drowned, fantastic, they've gone. <laughs> I know sometimes it, you know, it's, it, it, it's hard to put ourselves in those situations, but we don't really, we don't have to do it. Kids, the kids will do it. The students, I keep saying kids. I'm sorry. I do apologize because I'm used to you know, our students. And obviously, this you need, we need to judge this kind of performance stuff depending on the on the levels. Okay, so that was the tempest. And as I said, that's how I did it. And I did that with how how young was that youngest group? I did that with John, six, seven, eight, eight, nine. They get it. Fairies and monsters and stuff. They love it. We just we just got to go for it. Um, how are we doing for time? We're out of time. Totally out of time. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much. It's been. Um, <laughs> huh? One more. Little piece. Yeah? Have I got time? Mark, one, one more. I, I, not I noticed as I was preparing this uh, for today which in fact was recycling stuff that we've done before, that a lot of the, uh, a lot of the Shakespeare pieces that, that I use uh, have a lot to do with play in, in themselves. Um, Mark Antony is, is, is acting a role at the start there. The, the Tempest in The Tempest is not a real Tempest. It's all, it's all set up by, by Prospero. Um, and in, in, in one of the greatest... Sorry, I want just get this off. And one of the greatest plays... I think we'll all agree, is also about play, play acting. It even has a play in it, and the play is the big thing in it. And maybe end with that now because, uh, because it is the greatest thing ever written in any language, anywhere, according to me. <laughs> oh, what a rogue and peasant slave am I. Is it not monstrous that this player here but in a fiction in a dream of passion can force his soul so to his own conceit that by her working all his visage wand tears in his eye distraction in his aspect broken voice his whole function suiting with forms to his conceit what would he do if he had the motive and the cue for passion that I have? He would drown the stage in tears. He would cleave the general ear with horrid speech. Make mad the guilty. Appall the free. Confound the ignorant. 
and amaze indeed the very faculties of eyes and ears. Yet I a dull and muddy metalled rascal peak like John a dreams unpregnant of my cause and can say nothing no not for a king upon whose property and most dear life a damned defeat was made am I a coward who calls me villain breaks my pate across plucks off my beard and throws it in my face tweaks my nose gives me the lie in the throat as deep as to the lungs huh who does this to me soon as I should take it for it cannot be but that I am pigeon livered and lack gall to make oppression bitter or ere this I should have fatted the region's kites with this slave's awful, bloody, bawdy villain, remorseless, treacherous, lecherous, kindless villain of vengeance. Why, what an ass am I? Oh, this was most brave. That I, the son to a dear father murdered, moved to my revenge by heaven and hell, must unlock my heart with words like a whore, like a very drab, like a scullion, fie upon both my head. I have heard that guilty creatures sitting at a play have, by the very cunning of the scene, presently proclaimed their malefactions. For though murder hath no tongue, it will speak with most miraculous organ. I'll have these players play something like the murder of my father before mine uncle I'll observe his looks I'll tent him to the quick if he but blench I know my course the spirit I have seen may be the devil and the devil hath power to assume a pleasing shape yea and perhaps in my Melancholy, for he is very potent with such spirits. He abuses me to damn me. I'll have grounds more relative than this. The play's the thing wherein I'll catch the conscience of the king. That's it, we're out of time. And I've got enough for two or three hours more of this. I mean, we can just... But not today. Not today. <laughs>